I'm ugly, I'm single even though I'm married, I talk slow and sound like I'm retarded, and who told me to talk anyways? And this is an episode of Watch This Instead for the week ending Friday, the February 12th, 2010. So Gary Marshall's a genius, he's a legend, and not the kind of legend like Stanley Kubrick was a legend. He's the kind of legend that people beg to work with. He's created some of the funniest TV shows of all time, and his resume as a director is great and long, it's full of pretty good movies. And he's used that to convince dozens and dozens, I think there's actually 195 famous Hollywood actors in his newest movie that's not very good, Valentine's Day. The whole thing is super chipper, super goofy, and super shallow. It's not awful, it's not unwatchable, but it's not good. It's a story of one day in LA, Valentine's Day, and the various ways and means by which the lives of a dozen or more incredibly attractive Los Angelinos intersect on that one day. Some of the stories are great. None of them are exactly compelling or deep or rewarding or rich, but some of them are charming and interesting in that classic Gary Marshall way. The story that features and Hathaway and Topher Grace's character, as well as the one that features Hector Elizondo and Shirley MacLaine, are pretty fun. They've got a little bit of a spark. There's some chemistry between the actors, but the problem is there's just too many stories in the movie. There's like 15 stories, and they all tie together. So the movie doesn't just tell their stories. It also takes time out to tell how they're all related to each other, which is supposed to say something, and I'm not sure exactly what that's supposed to be. They're all attractive, they're all friendly, they're all full of energy, and they're all somewhat dim, which might be some kind of meta comment on Los Angeles that I'm not quite getting, but I don't think it is. I think that this is supposed to be a heartwarming, love story, bundle, neat moments all tied up together, but it ends up feeling like the stories of a bunch of really stupid, but friendly and attractive people that have really kind of cliche, obvious love lives. It also features the two tailors, Lautner and Swift, neither of whom can act at all and uh, feel really cravenly tacked on to get the teen market involved, I guess. So what should you watch instead? Watch the consummate L.A. romance, L.A. story, written and starring Steve Martin. Some of the best parts of Marshall's film are the parts where nobody's talking, of which there are some few ones, but the moments where we get to see the L.A. flower market and kayakers going down the canals in Venice Beach, it's nice to get a nice look at L.A. because it's a city that doesn't get photographed very often, somehow, even though that doesn't make very much sense. But ultimately, Valentine's Day abandons that part, which is quite nice and promising at the beginning to focus on these bunch of extremely goofy stories, and it's really kind of heartbreaking. L.A. Story, though, directed by Mick Jackson, is the ultimate love letter to and vicious send-up of Los Angeles. It's an absolutely great, classic, romantic comedy. It's got interesting characters, it's very, very funny, and it's very, very well made. The relationship between Steve Martin and the seemingly omniscient freeway road condition sign is about 30% more complex than any of the relationships in Gary Marshall's Valentine's Day, so he's got that going for him. Or, if you want to put money, metaphorically, in Gary Marshall's pocket this weekend to say thanks for Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, and Mark and Mindy, go and rent Frankie and Johnny, which he directed in 1991. It stars Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer as a couple of regular folk, which, yeah, okay, I mean, this is, he did this in Valentine's Day as well, I mean, this cast of 17 incredibly attractive, incredibly physically fit gods and goddesses playing a whole bunch of army corporals and regular stumbling goofy Joes and Tinas who just can't get a date because life's so hard. You're killing me, Gary, with this stuff. But if you can get over it in Frankie and Johnny, you get to a couple of performances that are really good because these people, yeah, they look like special people, but they can actually act and they're given the time to act because the story is let to play out over a long enough period that the characters are allowed to achieve some kind of complexity. And they seem like real humans rather than just incredibly attractive simpletons 
bumbling around the constant 72 degree sunshine that is February in LA. So watch that instead.